So robins chirp away at dawn, and daylight is longer, the sun is brighter, the grass greener, and we get shots of summer's warmth. Now we're realists, April has its moments, a snow shower or two, and it's not uncommon to dig out winter clothes on Mother's Day, but summer is on the horizon, and it doesn't take an act of faith to know that nature will rise again. We can count on it. How different the resurrection of the Lord. New life. That's what Easter is all about. For little kids, you know, it's the Easter bunny and chocolate candy and maybe new shoes. But for believers, it's the resurrection of Jesus the very heart of Christian faith. The resurrection. It relies on the eyewitnesses of the apostles from the earliest age. A belief that led them to martyrdom because they so firmly believed that it was true, not a myth, not a legend, not a what if. No, Jesus crucified is risen. And so the resurrection is a sign that God offers us to affirm that in Jesus' life and death and resurrection, the world is redeemed. That's the good news of Jesus. We, each of us, our world, in all its imperfections, forgiven, loved by God. Death has been overcome. Not the fear of death, but death. In our gathering, however hesitantly or wholeheartedly, with faith, we have heard, yes, it is true, Jesus lives. But our God would have us have faith significantly true. One man, a philosopher, said, so what what happened 2,000 years ago? What difference does it make in the lives of people? Let's begin by admitting that our experience of life falls short of our expectations, our dreams. It has always been this way. We aren't perfect human beings. Sometimes, for a longer or shorter time, we feel pounded by the reality we experience. Sometimes an ongoing, heart-rending, day-by-day challenge, and wistfully we sigh, what if? And each of us can put an ending to that question, what if? And sometimes for a longer or shorter time, life is as bright as the sun on this Easter morning. Life is joyous, ecstatic, and the cup is full. Enter Jesus crucified and risen. And he says to us, lift up your heart. It all has meaning, the whole shebang. Trust me and trust life. You know, down deep, we have an instinct that all our caring and sharing and loving and forgiving and seeking and wondering and questioning and suffering, all of life's joys and sorrows, down deep we have an instinct that this hope does not fall into the void. It's not make believe. It doesn't fall into emptiness. The grave is not the end. God in Jesus gives us a sign that our instinct is on target. God raised him and validates the meaning of his life and his death and his resurrection. And God says, in this Jesus, you will find the way to life. Not just eternal life, but life now. Easter faith calls us to live more generously and more graciously and more joyously in the spirit of Jesus. And the words are always the same. 
peace in a world always broken by war and discord and injustice. Justice, where everyone has a right to a life that has some kind of... Very not available. Connect to the internet. Unity. Forgiveness. That's what Jesus meant when he was always talking about the reign of God. The reign of God is at hand. It's right here. If only you would believe it and try to affect it. The reign of God is here. But it's so easy to settle for less, captured by the busyness of life, and to follow the crowd and to live on the shallows of life. On this Easter morning, the Lord reaches out to us. And he says to you and to me, follow me. I would make all things new through you. In the gospel narrative, when the disciples found the tomb empty and then experienced his presence, they were challenged. They were challenged to live as he did in his self-giving. And so we too are challenged, even as we are consoled. And you know, it's a very good thing to look backward and to recapture those times when we were most free and generous and faithful and caring and loving and courageous. Those moments, memories, urge us to move on and to recapture the best in our past as we live in the present. The present, that's where the Lord is. Right now, oh yes, he's with the Father. But the Lord tells us that he lives with us and within us. And he calls us to greatness in our very ordinariness. He invites us to mission. And then I think it's a new word in the church of today, a word that goes back maybe 50 years to the time of the Second Vatican Council, when we put aside trivia. And we started to focus on that which was central in the life of faith and in the life of the church. And we started to consider and to affect what to what we are called in our family life, in our work life, in our social life, to call down the very reign of God. And so Jesus invites us to mission, to take part with him in worship and prayer and in following the way that he lays out for us. You know, he must have been such an attractive human being that crowds followed him because they saw in him the way to live. And that's what we are to do. Follow him so that we will bring life to ourselves and to our world. I close with an editorial from America, the Jesuit Catholic of the resurrection. Christ lives. Sometimes in the midst of fear and sadness, it's difficult to believe this. <coughs> but what was offered to the fearful disciples is, is offered to us today. Boundless hope in the face of suffering. Boundless confidence in the face of turmoil. And boundless love Christ who rose on Easter morning to astonish and comfort the disciples is the same Christ who is with us today in our own struggles 